Welcome to Direct Talk. Our guest today is world-renowned dancer and choreographer Kaiji Moriyama. He is known for thinking out of the box when it comes to creating dances. Moriyama uses his body to express abstract concepts like the Japanese sword, katana, and even expressions describing the inner organs of humans. Recently, he has collaborated with a variety of traditional Japanese arts to explore various possibilities. He is also committed to a project bringing dance to people with disabilities. And he isn't doing it just for fun. He wants to create a piece presentable on stage. We asked Moniyama about his passion for dance and where it comes from. This is Moriyama performing one of his signature dance pieces, katana. The movements evoke a Japanese samurai sword. At the time, I was interested in the Japanese spirit. I wanted to learn more about ancient Japanese, about what was great about old Japan. With this dance, I wanted to imagine my own body was a katana, a weapon. I thought that I wouldn't be able to express a katana without putting strain on my body. So some of the poses are strenuous, and in those strenuous moments, I wanted to get closer, even if it's just a little, to embodying a katana. That's where the choreography started. I started changing the shape of my arms and hands, the angle of my body. And just as a katana is beautiful when seen from a variety of different angles, I wanted to show my body from the front, from the back, all of it. More than simply express this thing called a katana, this is a piece where I try to portray the human heart through a katana. Ultimately, it is a piece depicting human beings. In terms of a specific part of my body, I use my hands to express a lot. I like using my hands. You could say I'm very interested in seeing just how much potential the human hands have when it comes to expressivity. Imagine, for example, that your body is a tree. Your feet are like roots, drying up water from the earth beneath you into your body then to your stems and leaves. You sprout leaves, and you sprout flowers. The water evaporates, and then eventually falls back to earth. That cycle, drying up water from your feet and through your body, as that energy flows through your body, it gradually turns into emotions and feelings. Maybe when that passes through my chest, my trunk, I find it easiest to express my feelings through my arms and hands. When you breathe, your diaphragm expands. It expands. And maybe for me, my arms naturally spread out and start to express my feelings. It just happens naturally. In 2005, Moriyama performed katana in New York City for the first time. The New York Times published a rave review of the performance. There are many people overseas who are very interested in old-fashioned Japanese culture. But I'm always struggling with whether or not I'm successfully capturing the essence of that culture. I just hope the audience gets a sense of that essence, even if it's just a little. Here, Moriyama performs Live Bone, another one of his signature dance pieces. 
He wears costumes that represent the body's organs. The dance is an abstract expression of human viscera. Here, he depicts the stomach digesting food. And here, he depicts the workings of the small intestine. This piece has been a hit with audiences of all ages, and to date has been performed in 25 cities around the world. The piece Live Bone was made to recognize and share with everyone how amazing the human body is, how there are all of these unconscious bodily functions. The idea came from, I was doing a children's TV show. There was this segment on the show where I would use my body to express a certain thing in around 30 seconds. We wanted to show kids that you can express anything with your body, animals, insects. Then we started talking about depicting the internal organs. What it is, is I think I find a kind of joy in embodying things, becoming that thing. When you try to channel something that isn't human, when you embody an object or something completely outside the box, you start to see things from a different perspective. For me, dance is about chasing after something that cannot be seen, something uncertain that may or may not be there. When I dance, I'm seeking out those things. You could say, I'm trying to summon something that is there, but cannot be seen. Moriyama was born in 1973 in Kanagawa Prefecture, adjacent to Tokyo. As a child, he was mild-mannered and reserved, and rarely played with other children. I was extremely shy. I turned bright red. I was the kind of kid who couldn't even raise his hand during class at school. And I would try to suppress my emotions as best as I could. I was horrible at expressing them. In that sense, I was jealous of people who could express their emotions. People who could express their anger, who could cry. Perhaps I aspired to be the expressive type. When he was in grade school, Moriyama watched the Olympics and was taken with gymnastics. He decided he wanted to become a gymnast and began to forge a body of steel. But injury would derail his plans. Then at 21, he saw a theater performance, which inspired him to pursue a career as a musical theater actor. One time when I was doing musicals, I caught a cold, and I had what you could call an out-of-body experience. Looking back now, maybe you could say it was a dream. That experience, moving my body around, dancing to the music. I felt like I'd come in contact with something otherworldly, like what I was feeling was different from what I normally felt. It felt extraordinary. I was swimming through the air, slithering past the walls. I was looking down at myself and realized I needed to get back into my body. The experience made me start thinking that maybe that was the kind of aesthetic I wanted to express. Moriyama switched paths from musical theater to dance. Later he performed at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, a world-famous arts festival and was named one of the most talented dancers of the year. This is footage from an event announcing an upcoming stage performance in February 2019. Moriyama will be performing a dance piece adapted from No, classical Japanese musical drama. In recent years, he has put a lot of effort into collaborations like these with traditional Japanese arts. Creating a fusion of the two would be difficult, I suppose. 
know itself has already been perfected as an art form. At the same time, I believe that by allowing contemporary artists like myself to engage with these forms, we can give birth to something new, something valuable. There's this word, kuru, which means to go mad or lose one's senses. When I dance, these feelings of joy and fun come forth. Sometimes, feelings of anger and destruction come forth as well. Once in a while, I'll be dancing and I'll lose all sense of self. I fall into this illusion, like I've gone mad. There was a time when I was torn, thinking you can't allow that to happen in front of an audience. Then I encountered no theater, which taught me the concept of kuru, going mad. They told me that in no, you consciously go mad. It's not just about losing all sense of self and running wild. It's about showing the process of going mad for a purpose. You go mad in order to strike the audience, inspire them. You're demonstrating a way to live. So in no, the actors are determined to go mad. The performer is there to convey something. In a sense, they act as a vessel. The purpose of the dancer is to turn their body into a vessel. And by presenting your body in that way, you can move audiences, make them feel many things. That is what no theater has taught me. In 2017, Moriyama started working on a new project. He wanted to bring the joy of dance to those with disabilities, whose experience with dance up until that point had been minimal. Through events held in Tokyo and Osaka, he worked together with people with disabilities, creating choreography and producing their performances. I don't see it as charity work. Every person has a different body, and every person has a different personality. And as a dancer, I'm about exploring what it is that only I can express. So working together with people with disabilities to create something was very much an invaluable learning experience for me. I wanted to make sure that the dance pieces didn't all end up the same. Before I start rehearsing a dance piece, I do a ton of research. But ideally, the creative process is such that it breaks all of that research down. Working with people with disabilities, it's a learning process. We learn what a certain person can do in terms of movement, what they can't. We discover and learn together. For me, this opportunity to work with people with disabilities is not about being changed by this experience. Just the fact that we shared this time together, in this space, that is enough. Dance has taught me that there are so many rich, abundant things in life. So I, in turn, want to convey that to the people I meet. You could even say that one of the reasons I dance in the first place is to meet with people. Be quick on the uptake. This is something my late mother always said. Be someone who is quick to respond. It may go without saying, but you can try to be ready to be responsive. But it's not always that easy. Getting someone to resonate with you is also very difficult. Now, after all these years, I can fully appreciate the meaning of my mother's words. I always strive for my body to be a vessel for the audience's thoughts and viewpoints. I want to dance in a way that resonates for the audience. <laughs> 